hello 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 welcome welcome to another video guys thank you so much for clicking um yeah linux toolbox this is uh the part two just to give you guys a little update on the progress so far on the script um i did add some new features and i've been working on an installation command which pretty much works now um it took me a minute to figure out because i'm trying to keep this project like as little to no dependencies as possible and so far i've been at zero and it's been fun I almost added a dependency because I ran into a bug which I thought would just take too long to do. And you know, I I understand reinventing the wheel when you want to learn, but sometimes some problems, like I would never in my right mind try to rewrite Tokyo for myself. It's just been too much effort and people way smarter than me have done things, amazing things with it. Um, now I might tr attempt to write my own async runtime just for, for fun to learn how it works, right? But I would never actually do it like for full time, like that's just stupid, right? So, um, yeah, but I think I made the right choice. I ended up figuring out the bug without using the library, but the library I found to fix the bug actually t teach taught me the correct way to fix my bug. So indirectly, it's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't even know if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll show you guys some code. Um, real quick though, I wanted to say thank you for my three amazing, lovely followers so far on this channel that's great literally my you know third day after uploading um in the 50 you know roughly 70 views right here that's pretty cool that's amazing i've done no promotion for this channel so wherever you 70 humans are coming from i appreciate you guys so much um oh and shout out to uh shout out to this guy as well not sure to pronounce your name but shout out to him for giving me the idea to support um multiple distributions and commands because originally i was just going to use like linux like arch like this is personal script but i thought you know what it's not that hard to do so i'll show you guys the code and let me close this oops gonna watch that video later <laughs> video um great channel um yeah so let me show you guys the code close that so another change with the script is that it has a interactive shell so the original way to run a command is cargo run help boom you get your output right this is the help command it literally just reads the uh the command list grabs the you know name and description from the command and just prints it um you can also run help help which will give you command specific help which um literally just like prints all the data from the struct right like the name description examples and argument information and just prints them um i might make this prettier later but for now it's cool you know it's not that big of a deal um but yeah so when the when the uh script first runs or actually i'll show you guys i'll show you guys a full demo then i'll show you guys how it runs so i'm going to install nano on my system with my script and let's actually launch the interactive shell right so Yeah, so let's uh, let me actually keep it this size. So let me do just run and then shell, and this will boot up a shell. And here we have our interactive terminal, right? So if I want to exit, I can run exit now. Because I'm running cargo watch, it's gonna listen, wait for a build. So it it like runs your program as a sub process. So I can just save this file and it'll rerun. See like that. Um, but yeah, you can use, if you run this without, you know, in watch mode, like in actual like production, um, this will actually close the program when you're finished. But uh, yeah, we can run help and then it gives help. And every time you run a command, it actually clears the previous command. So that way it stays clean and the terminal never gets messy. I personally like this feature, but something I want to add is like a configuration option. So, for example, you could, uh, when you, like, when I actually write an installation script for this uh, code, this project, um, I'll have the script, like, set up in your, uh, you know, your .cache folder or something in your home directory, a little, like, config.json file, maybe, and it just reads, every time, like, the script starts up, it just reads that file, and then it tries to, um, you know, run. So that way, if you wanted to have things like, you know, debug logs, or maybe the logs disabled, or you know, things like uh, not clearing the console, you know, it would be able to support that. But like I said, this is a personal script first. So I'm just going to do what I personally like. And then, you know, if people want to contribute, it's cool. But, uh, you know, after I get everything working how I want it, I'll start to, you know, mod, mod, modularize it. I don't, I don't know if I said that right. 
I'll start to uh, make it more customizable, friendly, if that makes sense. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, clear. Uh, let's do install nano. Uh, okay. Installation failed because sudo wasn't found. So I'm just going to go into the handler and uh, yeah, let me just, it should work though. This is embarrassing because yeah, so <laughs> let me let me pause this and fix this bug. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, well, I know it only it only it was only like a second for you guys because I paused it, but um, yeah, uh, I fixed the bug in my code, and um, I'll just finish the demonstration and I'll show you guys what went wrong. But um, I actually learned something new. So apparently, um, I was missing a flag in sudo, but now when I run install nano. <laughs> It actually works. And uh, yeah, there's no confirmation. I personally just like to run the command with uh, no confirm. Again, that's probably not the best thing because most people kind of want to check what it's doing to your system versus just running everything. Um, so that would probably be something you guys can, you know, that'll be something to add to the config file to like allow people to disable. But um, yeah, if I show you guys this example in like a new terminal, so there's no sudo, right? install nano it asks for your password now so yeah there we go so fix that little bug um i'll show you guys how that works though so yeah so this code starts the shell which simply just runs this loop and reads standard input and output it should be pretty self-explanatory if you guys know what that does not really anything crazy um the shell and the normal CLI both share the same run function, which just runs the command, the respective uh, command handler. So, not that no, nothing from that code has really changed. I just kind of reorganized things a little bit. Um, and yeah, there was this weird bug I was running into when like trying to make this like shell environment and a uh, singleton command type thing work. Uh, where, you know, I had to, uh, skip the first argument. Yeah, this was a weird, like, I'm saying that, but this was a weird bug and I didn't know what was going on. Like, you know, you guys ever like refactor code and, uh, it works and then you refactor it and you break everything and you're like, what happened? So that's kind of what happened. And I had to like, you kind of introduce new, new bugs when you try to change things that already work, you know? So, um, yeah, that was fun, but they all call this run command. So let's get into the fun stuff. So yeah, the prepare statement. Um, so I, I don't think I showed you guys this last time. So these commands, these are all the state for the commands. They're created at compile time statically. They never change when the program runs. And um, the benefit of that is that uh, we can do, we can kind of uh, check all the requirements before any commands are ran. And then we can return really early. Um, but yeah, pretty much after this prepare statement is done, we simply call the handler that was associated with this command, right? So we just call this function, which is a function pointer right here, which takes in some arguments. And this works perfectly because, uh, let me see, if we go to the help handler, we can simply just use the arguments and this works really good. I'm not sure how clap does all this kind of stuff. I'm sure you can do this with clap, but it's been really fun not using a framework because it kind of like makes me solve my own problems and it's uh really fun. Um, so yeah, this is kind of all the help commandos does. It just like loops over the commands and prints their name and description. And then the more detailed one, um, you know, just prints all this kind of stuff. Uh, and then this is the installation command, which I kind of showed you guys a little bit earlier, but, it just checks if um you know there's no package to install and obviously there's, there's nothing to do um we grab the package name we want to install now this install command specifically just uses your distributions package manager um i don't have any really error handling well i, I mean i kind of do but you know i don't check if like pacman is actually installed which you would think it would be but depending on like how you set up arch you know i don't i don't i'm pretty sure pacman is not the only package manager on arch right um I tried to do this with yay the first time, which it actually didn't work, um, which I would prefer to do. But yeah, I, I just couldn't get yay to run. I'm not. It's it's something to do with like 
like spawning a process like this, I don't have access to the environment variables of my system, so it can't figure out where the yay command is from. And I'm sure like someone knows how to do that with this, but I'm not sure. So I just decided to like run these commands as a string inside of bash. So I just load up a little bash program, a bash shell, and then it runs all this stuff. So that's kind of how I'm doing this. But the cool thing and the magic is in this uh, distro enum right here, I can simply add support for new distributions and kind of write code depending on them. And to detect that, we simply check the path on your device and see if it exists. So, you know, Arch system have this Arch release, um, or we can check, you know, or we can check um, the OS release file, which is on Linux, right? And we kind of just check if they're Debian or Arch. And, and the cool thing is, again, I can simply extend this functionality as I need it. And uh, if they're not found, then we just assume um, unknown, right? And unknown is good because like for this installation handler, we can just say like this feature for this command with unknown is not supported, right? But maybe there's other features that aren't, that are distro agnostic and can work anywhere that I wanna add. Well, even if the script isn't supported technically, it could still work. So that's the cool thing about that. And that's the real reason like, I really glad I didn't use bash later, like later on into this because just having like proper data structures and control flow is really, feels really good. Like anything more than like 50 lines of bash is just kind of a pain. Um, you know, well, well not, no, I won't say that. I would say anything when you need like to store data or manipulate data, like if you need to save some kind of state and, and use it later, it starts getting annoying to use like something like bash personally. Um, so yeah, it has been a bit of a pain to work with like fight against rust type system a little bit because there's been a few instances where I just wanted to like test a bash command in rust really quick. And I can't do that because you know, obviously like you have to write the correct code or it won't compile. Right. Um, so yeah, just a little random thing, but that's how installations work so far. And then I have this, this, you know, match statement. Um, so yeah, but what this does is, uh, right here, we also like when, when I ran the, well, I closed the terminal, but when I ran the command, you guys saw all the output. So we kind of just like tell, you know, tell rust to, uh, send all our bash command output to our terminal we're running the program in that way you can actually see what's going on with the script if you want um and yeah then we're just waiting till the result comes back down here and you know if it's if it's good it's good if not it's not and then printing any errors so that's how that works um and then here's a test uh i kind of just use nano as like the test package because uh i i need to find out a better way to test this kind of package but for it's really it's really scary because for this type of like code that literally like affects your system um you know it's not the best thing in the world to actually like modify your system just to run tests i'm not sure how i would test this kind of stuff though um like i haven't been able to test the ubuntu version i'm just kind of assuming it works because you know i know um you know i know how apt get install works uh but who knows um, also, oh, the bug I was running to earlier really quick before I forget was sudo did not have an S. So sudo was basically saying you don't have permissions, but I guess this S flag just allows you to like input a password without it just defaulting to saying you're missing a password, I guess. Um, and then no confirm just gets rid of all the, you know, yes and no checks and stuff, which I kind of just find annoying because like this script is to make everything as fast as possible. So that's why I have it hard coded in here, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I have a to-do list now. So here's some things I plan to add. Um, I added the support to check the distribution. Um, and yeah, I did, I do want to get this one feature. So one, one really annoying, uh, thing I find with Linux or not Linux, but just as a programmer trying to like develop and, you know, put apps on uh, servers, on Linux servers, is that you consistently, I consistently have to install, you know, like if I wanna run a Node app, I have to install NPM, make sure it works, make sure it's on the system, set up, uh, you know, the path, all that kind of stuff. And that's just annoying to do, right? So it would be cool if I could just run my script and run, you know, JLT uh, config node, right? And then it literally does all that. And I can have multiple languages, so I can configure Go, Node, uh, you know, Rust, any language I want, and it 
gives the config files, it does the, you know, pathing setup, all that kind of stuff for you. Um, so that's, that's kind of the idea of this uh, script. And so, you know, I also want to add better error handling and, you know, some logging. I would like to have something where it generates logs, maybe in like, you know, um, you know, a temporary directory or something where at least you could look at the logs and know what's going on just in case anything went wrong. Um, cause you know, the more you modify with this kind of script, like the more of your system you modify, the more chances there are to break something. Like if I modify a user's, um, you know, bash like profile, I don't want my script to accidentally like delete their profile. So it would be cool to have like another reason why I wanted to use a real programmer language is it would be cool to have like a rollback feature where like you could undo all the commands you ran in case something went wrong. So, you know, um, I should, actually should like note that down, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the idea, but, um, yeah, that's the uh, Linux toolbox so far, pretty much the install command and then the interactive shell. I think it's a pretty good experience so far. And, um, oops. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's a pretty good experience so far and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next part when I code some more. <laughs> Thank you for watching and subscribe if you want. Peace.